One of the most common referrals we get at the uh, esophageal and airway program at Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital is called esophageal strictures. Uh, a stricture uh, uh, means a narrowing. So in this schematic drawing here, uh, this is like a, uh, a child's torso. This would be the chest, the diaphragm muscles separating into the abdomen. Um, and this is the trachea here and the esophagus going into the stomach. So a stricture here, you can see, is a narrowing uh, of the esophagus. The most, most patients we see for this um, started off with esophageal atresia. So they were born with esophagus that wasn't connected. Um, they had a surgery to bring those two ends together. That gives you a, a connection. It's often the case that the esophagus starts off wider at the top and narrower at the bottom with esophageal atresia. And then as this circular connection heals, sometimes the scarring process can uh, contract and make a circle that contracts into a tight circle. Um, that can be more common if the original connection had a trouble with leak. And the way you, you deal with esophageal strictures most commonly is to do what's called a dilation, most commonly with a balloon. So you can uh, stick a balloon catheter down the esophagus and then inflate that balloon, uh, sort of shaped like a hot dog, if you will. It, they have different sizes, and that can try to expand that stricture. Um, and doing these dilations is easy enough, and that's done routinely sort of at, at places all over the country. Um, the problem that, that we often find is, is children who have what we call a refractory esophageal stricture, meaning you're, you're doing dilations, you're trying to do things to improve it, but it, it's, not, it's not working, like it keeps coming back. Uh, and with the, the problem is when you do a balloon dilation, you're basically forcing uh, a stricture to get bigger, but you're essentially uh, traumatically doing that. So you're causing an injury in order to force uh, a scar to get bigger. And sometimes the, the reaction of the body to that injury is just to scar again. Um, and so for children who have a stricture that's not improving after three or four dilations, especially if you're getting up to five, six, or seven or eight dilations, often that is a patient that is best referred to a specialty um, uh, or, or to a program that specializes in children with esophageal atresia who, who see a high volume of that problem. Um, the techniques that, that we uh, use to look at those is, is really to understand it in detail. Uh, for, especially for kids with esophageal atresia, they can also have other issues related to their airway. But things that we will look at is one, how tight is this stricture? Sometimes it can be so tight it's that the two ends are really literally disconnected. Uh, how long is it? Is it very short? Or sometimes we'll see a stricture that can look like this. It's just really long. Um, it'd be unusual to be able to get a stricture that looks like that to improve only with balloon dilations. Sometimes you'll see a stricture that it is actually very short and even asymmetric. Um, the other issues we'll see with strictures is where is the stomach? Sometimes with esophageal atresia, in order to bring the esophagus together, we see cases where the stomach is actually pulled up into the chest. Um, uh, these kids often have worse reflux disease that also impacts the stricture. And it also means that the esophagus is too short at two different areas. It's too short at the level of the stricture. For example, here, you're missing that amount of esophagus. But if the stomach is also pulled up above the diaphragm, you're too short on the esophagus by that amount too. Um, and so these are some of the details we'll look at to, to decide what's the best way to handle a stricture and to be honest, it's, it's, it's often just uh, 
looking at it directly with experienced eyes to see how is this stricture responding to dilations. The, the techniques that, that are very common for us to employ are um, the endoscopic techniques uh, include steroid injections. Sometimes that can limit the, the scarring response. So as you traumatize the stricture to make it bigger, if you inject steroids, sometimes you can take the edge off the scarring response and get a less severe scar in response to it. Uh, strictures like this, um, you can often do a cutting procedure through the endoscope. Um, it's not, not very common for GI doctors to do that, but uh, for our program here, Dr. Wilsey, who, who sees a, a lot of kids with this problem, is, is uh, very experienced with that. And that can make a big difference in sort of removing some scar by cutting it uh, so that, uh, it, which a, a balloon often won't do. And then sometimes you frankly have to make a decision that certain strictures are better to reoperate on and to go back and sort of cut out the stricture and to redo the connection. Um, and, and for that, you, you have to think about where the stomach is. And this would be uh, an area of basically reoperative uh, esophageal surgery or reoperative esophageal atresia surgery. What we found is when you, if you take a comprehensive approach and look at all the different types of strictures and different aspects and options you have, um, we, we would have a very high uh, success rate to find a solution uh, so that you're not dependent on recurrent dilations and finally get to a place where you can eat well by mouth um, without getting food stuck or other problems. So when it comes to, to treating a patient with a refractory esophageal stricture for which the, the more typical plan of, of doing dilations has not culminated in a good result, um, what we've been able to develop here at, at All Children's Hospital uh, is a comprehensive team that sees patients like this uh, really week in and week out. And uh, having a high volume and, and that additional uh, daily experience basically uh, allows you to customize a good solution for each patient whether we're gonna get Dr. Uh, uh, Mike Wilsey, who's an uh, expert in esophageal treatment management from an endoscopy perspective, uh, whether it's Dr. Jennings, myself, or Dr. Shea from a surgical perspective of surgeons who specialize only in esophageal conditions, uh, we're able to come up with a good, uh, good plan to come up with a good long-term uh, result and outcome for patients with esophageal strictures.